Alleluia! Christ is risen! And welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this, the Feast of the Resurrection. It is March 31st, 2024. We're delighted to have you with us on this wonderful Sunday. The service will begin in just a few moments.
morning. Good morning. And happy Easter to everyone. Happy Indeed it is. My name is Father Milton Williams, and I am the rector here at St. Francis. And on behalf of the clergy staff, Father Matt Addington, Deacon Joe Zugan, the wardens of this congregation, the vestry, every member of this congregation, I welcome you to worship here on this, the Feast of the Resurrection, Easter Sunday morning. If you are visiting with us, and I suspect that we have just a few guests or visitors with us this morning, if you are visiting with us this morning, or, and, or, if you are worshiping with us online, and I suspect there are people from literally around the world who's watching us online, worshiping with us this morning. If you're worshiping online, you should see on your screen about right now a QR code. That QR code will take you to a place where you will find a visitor's card. I invite you to complete the visitor's card. If you are worshiping with us physically this morning, physically this morning, you can find the visitor's card on the St. Francis website. I encourage you to complete the visitor's card and then submit it. Also, if you're worshiping online, that QR code will take you to a place where you will find an order of worship for today. It has everything you need to help you matriculate to this wonderful worship on Easter, Easter Sunday. Again, welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this Feast of the Resurrection. You know, we don't have many announcements today because we just want to keep things just moving right along. I will say this, however, if you brought your flowers to flower the cross, there will be a time in the liturgy for that. So hold on to your flowers, okay? Hold on. Miss Kitty said, hold on to your flowers. <laughs> Thank you for that announcement, Miss Kitty. Thank you. <laughs> oh, what a joy it is. What a joy. Let me quickly say this. My dad, a blessed memory, my dad went to an Episcopal college in Lawrenceville, Virginia, St. Paul's College. And at that time in the 50s, in the 50s, they kept a serious Lent. That was church, chapel, three times a day, morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer. No music in the dormitories. Women covered their heads in mantillas. They kept a serious Lent. My father was put into shock and just traumatized <laughs> during the Lenten season. And my dad would always and often ask me later on in life, he would say, son, is Lent over yet? <laughs> and I would say, no, dad, we just have a few more days, a few more weeks to go. Well, you know what? My dad is resting in the bosom of Jesus, and I can say Lent is over. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you're worshiping with us online, know that this is Easter. Lent is over, and we are here to celebrate this wonderful and glorious morning. Let us prepare ourselves now to have a deeper relationship with the living Christ.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the dead of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you also are being saved, 
if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter 
and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sent out and went toward the tomb. the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went in and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know that's my shtick, and I love to do it every Easter Sunday. You know that? You know that I can't help myself. I cannot help myself. I can't, because it's Easter. Let me tell you, I said earlier, this feels, I, I am so glad it is Easter. I was just done with Lent, you know? I, I don't know if it was because, I, there's just so much going on in the world. Eh? There's so much going on in the world, so much just, I would be bold and say there's a lot going on that's just wrong. <laughs> you don't agree? <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going on in the world that's just wrong. And, and I, I, I need, I just needed some relief. And, and at least this Easter Sunday morning puts me in a different frame of mind. So that leads me to ask the question, what are you doing here this morning? Really, I mean, why, why are you here? What are you doing here this morning? I mean, why did you wake up this Sunday morning, get yourself dressed, or somebody helped you to get dressed? Why did you get up this Sunday morning, get yourself dressed, and come to church this morning? Are you here because somebody told you you had to be here? Are you here because, because it is a family tradition that's passed down from generation to generation that on Easter Sunday morning, people in the household, extended family, get themselves dressed and come to church on 
Easter. Is that why you're here? Are you here because, because when you sit in a church that's nearly full and you can rub shoulders with your neighbor, it gives you that warm and fuzzy feeling on the inside. And, and where the world is today, everybody is grabbing for some warm and fuzzy. Is, 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 that, is that why you came here today? Now, let's be clear. I'm not judging anybody. Or English teachers isn't anyone. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm just so thrilled to see you here today. I really am. For the visitors, just tickle pink that you are with us today. But, but what brought, are you here because you knew you were guaranteed to get the best church music <laughs> in Greensboro on an Easter Sunday morning. I mean, come on, let, 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 let's be clear. I mean, come on, I mean, we should have charged you all admission to come in here for this today. <laughs> I mean, special brass and everything going on on Easter. Why? Again, I ask the question, why are you here? Or or are you here because you believe that roughly 2,000 years ago, something happened to change the course of history? Something happened about 2,000 years that, that, that changed and, and set this world in a different place, on a different path. Are you here because you need to surround yourself with, with other people who are hoping, other people who are praying, other people who have the same pressing need to know that Jesus Christ, what Jesus said to his disciples, what Jesus said is true. I mean, are you, are you watching online this morning? I mean, what keeps you connected to the screen wherever you may be? Are you watching online this morning? Or perhaps you will view the sermon, uh, the soul liturgy later on in the week. But, but what is it that brings you to a place where, where you are engaged today? Are you here? Are you engaged? Because, because you are hoping, you are holding hoping to hold on to just enough faith in God that you would bear witness to see that God will do in your life what he did in the lives of those people in Palestine. Are you here today because, because, because in your heart you have a testimony. You know, you know that that you are sitting here not out of anything that you have done, that, that God has brought you from one country to another. God has brought you back home this morning. Are you here because you know the goodness of the Lord and, and you wouldn't be who you are or where you are if it hadn't been for the mighty power of God doing something in your life? And, and you can't help but somehow want to bear witness with other other. other Folk who love Jesus. Why, why are you here this morning? This past Friday, this past Friday was Good Friday, and at noon we gathered here in this church like other Christians, like other Christians of our faith and the faith community around the world, and we, we worship as we do in a rich Catholic tradition. It was on this past Friday that we bore witness to a great tragedy, a great miscarriage of justice. It was on this past Friday that we, we saw, we bore witness to a Jewish itinerant preacher, a homeless rabbi with a small band of questionable followers. This teacher stood in a courtroom and was given a death sentence. He was given a death sentence simply because he spoke truth to power. And following the judgment, he was forced to carry his own cross of execution until he reached a hill far away. And it was on that old rugged cross that, that he was nailed and bled and died. 
gathered there at the foot of his cross, congregating around the foot of his cross was, Bible tells us, was his mother and some other women who were devoted to his cause, his, his, his brother and some other folk. Bible tells us that they were a group of random soldiers who, who were at the foot of the cross, who cast lots and gambled for his clothing. And then after he died, a, a, man, named, a man named Joseph of Arimathea was passing by and he, he begged the authorities to take the body of Jesus and he, 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 he detached him from the hard wood of the cross and, and wrapped him in a burial shroud and laid him in a, bi, in, in, in a, in a borrowed tomb, the Bible tells us. And, mm, mm, mm. But that was Friday. <laughs> that was Friday. Now it is early Sunday morning, and a woman named uh, Mary Magdalene, one of his disciples, went to visit the grave. And when she arrived at the tomb, she saw that the grave had been opened, and assuming that someone had gone into the grave and stolen the body of Jesus, uh, Mary runs and finds two of the disciples of Jesus, two followers, and she exclaims to them, uh, that someone, someone has stolen, someone's stolen our Lord. And the two men, the two men hearing this news, they arrive at the, at the tomb and, and they look into the tomb and they find it just as, as Mary had told them. And, and then when they saw it, they, these two men left this poor woman weeping, at a grave, they ran home, leaving her there, this woman inconsolable. And then, and then she steps inside of this grave. She walks into and through the mouth of a grave. And Mary is questioned by, by two angels dressed in white. And then, unknowingly, a third party, Jesus, the risen Lord, confronts Mary with the very same question that was asked of her by these two angels. The, the, the question is this, woman, why are you weeping? And what are you looking for? Why are you weeping and what are you looking for? Uh, allow me, if you will, to take preacher's privilege and, and reframe that question for you. Let me suggest to you one way, of, another way of asking that question is this. Jesus could have asked like this. Woman, what are you doing? And why are you here this morning? Woman, what are you doing? And why are you here this morning? I dare say for Mary Magdalene and for the other two disciples who, who ran home leaving Mary at the grave, and for everyone else who loved Jesus, who had placed all of their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations in this man who declared to be the Son of God? Was it not enough? Was it not enough to witness God incarnate? Was it not enough to witness God in the flesh die? Was it not enough to see hate crucify love? Was it not enough to have my faith? It was it not enough to, to have your faith, our collective faith? Is it not enough that we had our faith, our, our faith shaken by doubt? Was it not enough that, that your hopes, that your hopes and your dreams were trampled by evil schemes? Was it not enough to have your, your anxieties and fears become, uh, 
when your anxiety and your fear become your closest companion. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? Was it not enough to feel as though, to feel as though the whole world has been turned upside down and you have no power in yourself to even know, to begin to know how to turn it right side up? What are you doing? And why did you come here this morning? Now, I take personal responsibility and say that I cannot speak for you. I can only speak for myself. And, and I need to tell you this morning that, that, that I came here this Easter Sunday morning like our sister Mary Magdalene. I came here because I needed to hear the voice of Jesus, our risen Lord. I needed to hear, I needed to hear Jesus call my name. I got up this morning, I, I, I dressed myself, and, and I came to church, not because of this liturgical responsibility. I, I, you know, we had the Easter vigil last night, and we baptized three children last night, and we didn't leave here till after 10.30. God knows I could have stayed home and slept a little longer this morning. <laughs> but I got myself up, or, or as the old folk, who you know, as the old, used, old folk used to say, he woke me up this morning. The angel of love just came and, came and dipped down his finger of love and touched my eyelids this morning and, and woke me up this morning. I came here this morning because I, I needed to hear, I needed to hear some good news. I needed to hear again the gospel message that indeed Jesus is alive today. And as he did speak to Mary Magdalene in the midst of a graveyard early, early at the break of day on a Sunday morning, Jesus as he called Mary's name, so Jesus is calling your name. He's calling my name. If you're watching online, my dear friends, Jesus is calling your name this morning. When life becomes burdensome, I don't know about you, but, but, but I need to hear Jesus call my name when when life becomes anxious and fearful i need to hear jesus call my name when life becomes sad and lonely i need to hear jesus call my name i don't know about you but when i don't know which way to go in life and i'm i'm looking should i go this way or this way i i, I need to hear the voice of jesus working through the holy spirit say child just calm yourself and trust me. I need to hear Jesus call my name. Why did you come here this morning? And still, and, and still yet there is a truth that I believe that is just as great, and it is this, and you can write this one down. You can't live in the full glory of Resurrection Sunday and hold on to Good Friday. Do I have to say that again? You can't, you can't live in the full power of the resurrection of, of this Easter Sunday. You cannot sit here today. You cannot hear the gospel read today. You cannot receive the symbols of baptism today and hold on to Good Friday. The Bible tells us that after Jesus called Mary by name, he said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. 
do not hold on to me because I've not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers. And the Bible continues to say that Mary Magdalene went. You see, to believe in the miracle of the power of the resurrection is to believe that Jesus is always sending us into the world to bear witness to the power of God. This world needs to know it's Easter. This world is in a hot mess. I can't get one amen on that one. This world's in a hot mess. And this world needs to know that Jesus is alive. And Jesus, the resurrection, says that, that God has enough power to make wrong right. God has power to make darkness light. God has power to come into your life and fix those broken spots and places that you have no idea where to begin. The world needs to know, the world needs to know that on Good Friday there was death in the grave, but today there is Easter and everlasting life. The world needs to know that on Good Friday there was sadness and brokenness, but on Easter there is forgiveness and healing. The world needs to know that on Good Friday there was gloom and sadness, but at Easter, as, as, as my big mama would say, there was unspeakable joy. The world needs to, and maybe you need to know it. You can't live in the fullness of Resurrection Sunday and hold on to Good Friday. So again, I ask you, I ask you, my dear friends, why are you here this morning? Are you here listening to our risen and resurrected living Lord? Are you here to hear him call your name? Are you here because you deeply want to believe, you desperately want to believe that, the, that, that Easter Sunday you, you really want to believe that Easter Sunday has more power than Good Friday. Are you here? Are you here because life is only worth the living? Life is only worth the living because he lives. So, what are you doing here? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord <clears throat> have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord <laughs> Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord <laughs> Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord And grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, the time that you've been waiting for. And now, uh, Benito is going to give us what, we, what I call uh, cross-flowering music. <laughs> So, at this time, you may be seated, and if you have flowers to bring forth, do come up and make this a living cross for Easter.
Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. the world, 
By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body of and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith. With thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.